So let me uh, thank Ilya and the VTech Foundation and the organizers of this wonderful meeting for putting this together. That's right. Okay, so um, if we want to understand aging, it's a good idea to start um, with the evolutionary history that formed the process in the first place and a fundamental insight into this um, came from August Weismann in the late 19th century who um, established the, the theory of inheritance where he realized that exclusively germ, germ cells pass on the genetic information and do th they do that indefinitely. Our germ cells are essentially 200,000 years old of modern homo sapiens and they continuously perpetuated the genetic material. Um, when he realized that germ cells are sufficient to transfer the genetic material, Weismann also realized that indefinite maintenance of the soma would be completely futile in terms of offering any sort of fitness benefit for a species. So upon establishing the next generation, the soma can age, decay, and die. That's essentially why we're getting sick when we age, because we are not made to live forever. We are just the mere vehicles for our germ cells. So DNA damage is a key driver of the aging process. And that is because our DNA is irreplaceable. It requires constant repair. The DNA in each one of our cells is subjected to tens of thousands of DNA damage events every single day of our lives. It can come from the environment or from the endogenous metabolism. This myriad of DNA damage events has consequences. What we've understood for many decades now is that DNA damage can lead to genetic aberrations, such as mutations, for example, that alter the gene sequence. And if they affect oncogenes or tumor suppressor genes, the result is cancer. We know, know for a long time now that DNA damage is the root cause of cancer. But DNA damage can also stall transcription and replication. And this will lead to dysfunction of cells. DNA damage signaling can become chronic. It can drive then functional decline of cells. It can lead to atrophy and inflammation by triggering processes such as cell death, senescence, as we heard from Valerie, but many other additional effectors. So a key mechanism to prevent the detrimental consequences of DNA damage is DNA repair. The DNA repair is one of the first processes that has formed an evolution to allow stable genomes and stable genetic information. What happens when DNA repair is dysfunctionally in humans is shown on this, uh, on this slide. Two patients that are born with single gene mutations in DNA repair mechanisms. And you see here xeroderma pigmentosum patients who are ready as a child as multiple skin carcinomas, something very unusual for us. It takes decades for skin cancer to evolve after the initial UV damage. Here already several thousand fold increased skin cancer susceptibility demonstrating the mutagenic effect of DNA damage. On the other side, you see a cocaine syndrome patient who already in the first decade of his life has undergone the aging process. And these, you see here over signs such as a hallmark of retinal degeneration. I will come later to that. These children die of neurodegeneration and atherosclerosis on the average age of 12 years. We ask the question whether we could increase the capacity of DNA repair. I told you that hundreds of distinct DNA damage types are formed. There are at least six major DNA repair systems that are required to remove these distinct damage types. And so far, we only know of highly lesion type specific DNA repair, single repair enzymes, such as photolysis that were demonstrated to be improved. The question we pose is whether there exist master regulators of DNA repair capacities. Our rationale was that the SOMA 
And we use here Cineraptide as elegance as a model because the, we can very well study in a short period of time the distinction between somatic and germline repair. Our rationale was that the soma has limited repair capacity because the soma just only need to be maintained for an individual's lifespan. In contrast, germ cells have an enormously high DNA repair capacity because their genomes are perpetuated forever. So can we actually confirm, confer the DNA repair capacities of a germline to the soma? This question was posed by a highly talented uh, PhD student, Arturo Buhamal, um, and he asked whether DNA damage response genes might be actually have a common regulatory mechanism. And so he surveyed the promoters of DNA damage response genes using C. elegans for its simplicity. And he identified a specific motif that was, in, was highly enriched on the promoters of DNA damage response genes. And this motif is it a bona fide target site for the so-called dream complex. And these dream target sites are present in the majority of DNA damage response genes. This is a, the dream complex is, uh, is a, a transcription repressor complex that recognizes these specific elements. And we found now that this leads to a repression of a large number of DNA repair genes. And this dream complex is specifically assembled in somatic cells of C. elegans. It's not present in the germ cells. What is the consequence of that? The first thing we tested using um, C. elegans worms, L1 animals, that normally undergoes within the, the, the next 48 hours the full developmental program. But when we treat these with DNA damage, they arrest the development. We can measure this by now measuring the progression from the L1, the first larval stage, the L2, L3, or four larval stages until adulthood. And we see here, um, uh, with increasing UV-induced DNA damage, we see at this 48-hour uh, um, time point still uh, the, that the animals are developmentally arrested. However, when these, have, these animals have mutations in the dream complex, they're defective now of this, in this repressor complex. They're significantly advancing developmental growth because they become resistant to the UV-induced DNA damage. And we can do that with any component of this dream complex. We can also do an epistasis experiment where we take two mutations in two distinct components and validate that also the double mutant has the same degree of resistance to DNA damage showing that it's a bona fide function of the dream complex. We can also look at lifespan. We can promote, in, in humans, it's sufficient to have one DNA repair defect and the human ages which within one decade. In worms, we need exogenous DNA damage to produce this. And that's what we're testing here in the solid lines. We are treating um, with, with DNA damage and we see a significant lifespan extension um, uh, of DNA damage driven aging in C. elegans by distinct components mutated in the dream complex. And we ask whether really whether this is due to an enhancement of DNA repair. The most well characterized type of DNA damage are thymidin dimers that are formed by UV radiation. We can visualize these dimers that are formed with a specific, uh, with the lesion specific antibody, this is what we do here on a slot plot, and we see that there's only that after immediately after UV, these lesions are formed in the in the DNA, and there is a removal, a gradual removal of these lesions here. However, in mutants, FLIN52, DPL1, subunits of the dream complex, this repair is accelerated. It's far more efficient quantified here, it's a far more efficient removal of these lesions. So repair is enhanced. We can also show that in the adult worms, here we use now immunofluorescence. We see the CPD lesions. Most of these cells here, the heads of the animals are neurons. Um, there's a, a, a gradual rem removal in wild type, but a much more rapid removal in the LIN52 mutes that are defective in dreams. More efficient DNA repair. Then we, 
uh, we uh, performed a transcript RNA seq analysis, looked at the expression changes in these uh, dream mutants, LIN52 mutants, and we saw here a derepression if the repressor complex defect, derepression of a large number of genes that were involved in DNA repair. And what was really has never been seen before is that the induction, the genes that are induced here, operate in all different DNA repair mechanisms, nucleotide excision repair, inter-cross-link repair, basic excision repair, homologous recombination repair, mismatch repair, and non-homologous adjoining. Genes operating all of these systems are now derepressed and are elevated. Just go very quickly over this. We test it now because there are so many different repair mechanisms that are now augmented. Do these animals become resistant to all these different types of DNA damage, not only UV, and indeed they do. Ionizing radiation, significant um, uh, resistance. Um, uh, alkylating lesions, a significant resistance. And also cisplatin, a, a DNA damage agents frequently used still in tumor therapy, significant resistance. And also single mutations in DNA repair genes can be suppressed because other repair mechanisms are enhanced. It's an interesting experiment, a different type of experiment. Here we used an embryo. These embryos undergo most rapid cell divisions of somatic cells to form a larva. When we use ionizing radiation to induce double strand breaks, these embryos die. And this is quantified here with increasing ionizing radiation in black, the wild type. LIN52 mutation is sufficient to, um, to in increase resistance even in the proliferating cell types here to double strand breaks. And what is more, we can suppress a BRCA BART mutant uh, that is highly sensitive to double strand breaks equivalent to carriers in humans of BRCA mutations, we can, a LIN52 mutation is sufficient to completely revert the sensitivity. You might wonder, what do we care about worms? What about humans? So we uh, looked at human DNA, all human DNA repair genes, and we asked whether in chip uh, seek experiments where distinct components of dreams were investigated, whether the dream complex also binds to promoters of human DNA repair genes. And there's a significant enrichment among dream target genes, genes that are bound by the dream repressor complex that are involved in, D, uh, in DNA repair in humans. Now in humans, um, we know of a specific kinase that phosphorylates one key component of the dream complex, LIN52, on a specific phosphorylation site, and this phosphorylation is required for the assembly of the dream complex. So what we tested as a proof of concept here is to inhibit the DIRK1A kinase that uh, deposits a specific phosphorylation with two independent types of inhibitors, the natural component harmine and an independent inhibitor, the chemical in and tested whether we would find the same that we identified in C. elegans, which is that upon disassembly of the dream complex, we would also have a derepression of DNA repair genes that could then lead to prevention of cancer by reducing mutations and by promoting longevity by um, enhancing genome stability. Now, do these, uh, do these um, inhibitors function? And um, so we use RNA-seq, these two in independent inhibitors in human quiescent cells. We find a derepression of DNA repair genes, the same as we find in C. elegans. Does this have a consequence? And indeed, we test here UV and uh, MMS, alkylating agents and UV-induced lesions, completely different lesion types that induce apoptosis in these quiescent cells. And we can revert this apoptosis by treating either with harmine or with indi, because there's more resistant to DNA damage. Can we use this in an in vivo model? And we used here age-related macular degeneration as an intervention target. We know that DNA damage, such as triggered by a defect in cocaine syndrome, I showed to the patient in the mice, it also leads to loss of photoreceptor cells. They undergo apoptosis. We find in human um, uh, AMD patients, 
a reduction in the expression of the very same repair gene types, transcription coupled nucleotide excision repair. This down regulation is linked to the macular degeneration. Here we use a mouse model that has an ERCC1 knockout. Um, and we looked at the retinas after we treat these animals for, with harmine for two weeks with the inhibitor of DIRK1A. And then we look here at the induction of apoptosis in the photoreceptor cells, and we see a significant reduction of apoptosis. Why is that? That is linked to a reduction of DNA damage. Here we use gamma H2AX uh, to, to, to uh, quantify the DNA damage that is accumulated in these animals, and we can revert this DNA damage with the inhibitor of DIRK1A. So I conclude that we identified here dream, the dream repressor as a master regulator of DNA repair capacities. Dream mutants and C. elegans elevate resistance to DNA damage by improving DNA repair kinetics. Dream mutants derepress somatic uh, expression of DNA repair genes and confer germline-like repair capacities. This co dream complex inhibition in quiescent human cells elevates the resistance to distinct DNA damage types. And in vivo, we show that dream inhibition um, protects from retinal degeneration, a bona fide um, aging feature that we can readily quantify as a proof of concept. And the dream inhibition thus offers a pharmacological route to enhance genome maintenance to prevent DNA damage driven cancer development of aging. That's what we propose um, and want to um, base upon this work. And uh, I think, uh, I think the, the major um, driver of this work in the lab, Arturo, and uh, I think also our collaborators, um, Georgina and, and um, uh, uh, Kalina in the George Garina's lab, who did the mouse work here. Um, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Oh, okay. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for that talk. It was um, very, very interesting. I have a lot of questions, but I'll keep it to the one. Um, so recently, uh, somatic mutation rates were shown to be inversely correlated with uh, lifespan. Um, and you brought the example of patho uh, human pathogenicities that are um, so-called uh, lifespan uh, or aging, uh, early aging. Uh, is there um, any knowledge about what their mutation rates are and also what kind of mutations are occurring there, right? There's also this uh, issue of mutational signatures that was brought up. Um, and I'm sure that also relates to the work you did in the worms, where you're saying that uh, in humans, it takes a, a decade and in the worms, you have to induce it. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for these uh, very interesting questions. Uh, so indeed, uh, um, somatic mutation rates increase uh, with aging, and uh, this is very much related to the max species specific maximum lifespan, at least for uh, mammals. Um, and I think this will be very interesting to look at now. We haven't looked at that now yet. We haven't yet looked at the somatic mutation rates, how they are effective. We are very interested in doing that. In C. elegans, actually, nobody has looked because they are post mitotic cells, so nobody has done that. We are starting to do this now. Um, and I think this will be very interesting uh, to look at what type of mutation and how this might be slowed down here. Yes. Please, microphone. Oh, thank you. Thanks very much. Um, what are dreams good for? Um, I mean, I often think this, but in this case, what's the dream complex good for? It must have evolved for something in somatic cells because presumably, I mean, it's, it's an additional process that's then inhibiting yes. DNA repair. Um, why, why would we want to do that? I mean, from an evolutionary perspective. So I mean, that's a very good question, and I think I can answer that from C. elegans because that's more clearly what what uh, this what the consequence of that is. So switching off um, uh, somatic DNA repair um, allows to save resources for the animal. So if we eliminate dream, we do have a slight decrease in fitness in uh, fertility of the animals. It's rather slight, but of course, on an evolutionary scale, this this could have an effect. So um, it's probably saving energy. Dream, of course, also re uh, re represses a lot of cell cycle genes. That's also another function of, of dream. Uh, the good thing is inhibiting dream is not sufficient to drive cells into cell cycle, but it's sufficient, as we show, to improve DNA repair. Um, so uh, I would argue that it's a, it's a, it's a very safe type of target. Um, but the reason probably that this, this mechanism evolved is just by diverting resources because 
investing more in an elevated somatic denal repair is just uh, futile in terms of the fitness of a, of a species, which means the long-term reproductive success, which only requires this level of denal repair in the germ cells. My question is, uh, you mentioned that there are uh, more than 100 uh, different kinds of uh, DNA damages. Um, and my question is, uh, do all of them have the option to be uh, repaired by uh, the enzymes or there are, are there kinds that cannot be mended in any way? So all types of DNA lesions um, can be repaired. There are repair mechanisms for that, otherwise, uh, this will be incompatible with life. They have to be repaired with different efficiencies. There are lesions that are not being repaired. One example are senescent cells. There are um, persistent strand breaks accumulating in senescent cells that are just not being repaired. They could be repaired if the repair capacities were there, but probably because essential repair mechanisms are repressed in such cells by for instance, the dream complex, these are not repaired. So uh, yes, by um, uh, there are repair mechanisms to restore any type of, of DNA lesion. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay, thank you very much.